I want to dig deeper into those tools and recap. I'm going to recap a little bit about what intelligence a tool should provide for us, and then I'm gonna show you an example. I'm gonna be switching between uh, this slide and uh, a live example on the platform, just to highlight some case studies and some uh, um, um, applications and practice of what does that mean in reality. What do I need to get going with crop performance? Pretty much nothing other than your basic field statistic, field setup. So you've already brought in your boundary, you've identified your crop type, and we're all good. What happens from here is uh, automatically the retrieval of the weather data, the remote sensing data. The remote sensing could be from a satellite, from a plane, or from a drone. So pretty much there's nothing else you need to do. You've already done all the hard work by the initial setup. What does the intelligence that the crop performance brings to me as an agronomist? It reports on multiple things. One of it is uh, crop status. So what does that mean? Crop growth status, it's a column that identifies what, sta what stage is your crop at. For example, in potatoes, we use the six stages of emerge, not emerged, emerge, uh, crop development, row closure, and this is for, for the cases of crops similar to potato. What, what this report also, uh, the information it brings as well is your crop growth speed. And for that column, uh, the labels that you would see in uh, declining in growth, has it been uh, growing steadily, has it been growing fast? So how, how is it growing from last week to this week? Because again, think about this as we're looking at imagery. We have a full overview of the field and every other field in your portfolio as an agronomist. So we're able to look at them and say, this one is advancing faster than that one. And in the example that I'm going to show you in a minute, I'm going to highlight this particularly. Now, how is this information delivered to me? Two ways. You can either access them through the platform or you can receive them through an email that reaches your inbox that summarizes uh, the crop performance uh, information. So let's go look at a live example. But I'm an agronomist and I'm looking at those five pivots. It's my grower. I want to provide the best services and I want to be in the right place at the right time. How do I use the crop performance um, analytics? I know that I'm planting potatoes. I need to get intelligence of how my potatoes are doing. Right here, you see that this is the crop performance summary. I'm just going to enable the full dashboard to have a full view. My potatoes are uh, put into different varieties. This is here, I'm looking at the clear water russet. Here, I'm looking at shepherdy. Uh, in the clear water russet, I have different uh, pivots that are planted this variety. In Shepardy, I have pivot one and three. I can see here that those were planted, the Shepardies were planted a couple weeks before the clear water. Looking at it in May, so I planted in April and I planted some in March. Come May, I look at this dashboard and as the agronomist, I see, I can say, all my clear water russets have not emerged yet. They're still their crop growth is stable. So relative to each other, they're all growing at the same speed. They're all moving in the same direction. And uh, based on the NDVI score, the worst NDVI scorer between all of them is pivot five. So come May the 22nd, I'm looking at pivot five and I'm thinking, I need to keep a closer eye at pivot five. I wanna see if pivot five is going to catch up or not. It's a different case in my Shepardy. Pivot one and pivot three are more advanced. They are in the crop development stage. Uh, they're both identified as fast growth. So from last week to this week, they've grown really, really fast. And it looks like they're, they're quite comparable, but pivot three has a lower uh, biomass index or a score compared to pivot one. And I'm looking now on, on the 2nd of June. So 2nd of June, what do I get out of it? I'm looking and I'm seeing all my crops are in the stage of crop development. Let's fast forward and go a little bit to July. So now it's July. I come here and I say, okay, I'm looking at my russets. They're all at the same stage. They're all in closed canopy. Uh, pivot four is still behind. It's still the one that has the smallest, uh, this is consistent throughout the season. It's still the one with the smallest NDVI. And when it comes to my shepherdy, it looks like pivot three, have advanced to senescing a little bit faster than pivot one. So from a logistic perspective, I know that pivot three is gonna to go to harvest a little bit earlier than pivot one. 
So this is an example of how crop performance is something that you could use to, to derive intelligence. And I have one question that I got through email from one of our uh, participants. So I'll start with the quick emailed question. It, it says, what aspects of crop performance have you been able to monitor remotely? The biomass, the vigor, the canopy, the water stress. And the answer is as follows. It's pretty much all of the above. In the case of a water stress, if you want uh, uh, to derive any water stress information, it is data dependent. For example, you need a thermal sensor to advise on a water stress condition. You need a sensor that has red edge band to advise on uh, identifying really subtle changes between chlorophyll content and uh, st early stresses of, um, of, of nitrogen or, or, or any early stresses, any stress that is chlorotic that will show as symptoms having chlorosis or, or yellowness. That would be something you need a data, you need a source of data that can see in the red edge band. So as a debrief, it's all of the above, but they're all data dependent.